All right, we're going to be getting into this Risa Tisa story. A lot of people on the internet are saying they don't believe the story. Uh, many others say they believe the story. Let's get into it. Now to an ABC News exclusive, an interview with the woman behind it, an incredibly viral mm. TikTok video series. I know, Robin, you had a chance to sit down with her. And boy, does she have a story to tell, oh, Michael. Yeah. Teresa Johnson's story of falling in love, marrying, and then divorcing a man she says turned out to be a pathological liar has over 400 million views. Mm. We're not naming the man involved. We're using the nickname she gave him in the videos. If, if it's females that hate this story, and what's going or what went on with this lady, I can see why. This story is not different from many other females. I mean, you get a group of 10 females together and they would tell you stories about all of these men that they date that, that are liars. So I can see why a lot of people are saying the story is not that important already. But let's, let's hear some of the details and see. Here. With just one question, she had the internet hooked. Who did I marry? In her 50-part TikTok series, Teresa Johnson, now widely known on social media as Risa Tisa, details her whirlwind pandemic romance that she says was filled with love, heartbreak, and alleged deception. I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. The viral saga has garnered more than 400 million views and counting. Were you nervous at all about sharing? Yes, I was nervous, but ultimately I decided if you're going to tell this story, tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. I also really truly believe the story. First and foremost, that's the first video I just seen with you putting on something on your face, cursing, talking about who the, the Jew marry and all of those things. That's not someone who's nervous. That's someone who's confident enough that they're gonna tell their story no matter what. That's not someone who's nervous. Let's continue. We'll help somebody. It costs you nothing to verify, but it very well may cost you everything to not verify. The narrative spread out over an eight hour long TikTok playlist. Part one, how'd y'all meet? So we actually met on Facebook, Facebook dating. And we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um, under two different names. There are a lot of things in this story that were red flags. This was probably one of them, but we thought it was hilarious that we matched on two different sites. This was a guy who I really... Question, what was the red flag about that? That it, the guy was on two different sites? Because if that's a red flag, it's a red flag on her part because she was on two different sides also. Now let's continue. After having multiple conversations with, felt like, wow, you know, where have you been? Within two weeks, she says the couple decided to quarantine together in her Atlanta home. It was more of a very temporary, he's coming to stay for the lockdown. The lockdown just never ended. Teresa says Legion told her he had substantial savings from his time playing arena football and quickly took over paying her household bills. Part of the reason that you stayed, was there anything to do with the fact that he said he had money or you thought that he had money? I definitely was not with him for the money, but I will admit that there came a point he was paying all the bills and he was being, as he called, a provider. And I had never in my life experienced that before. Mm. I... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm pretty sure because men, they will see plus size women and just prey on them. They know that there's not many people. I'm not saying no one. There's not many people going for them. So men that understand that just know that they could manipulate their way around these type of people. I wonder if manipulation is a part of this story. I mean, being a liar, let's see. Really felt like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, I can just exhale. Yes, that felt good. Teresa also says he made promises to buy her things, including a luxury car, a house, and a trip to London. What were you thinking when he was making all of these, these promises and, were, and when they weren't happening? We're touring houses. I physically saw him put an offer in on a house. 
it is unfathomable to see someone put an offer in and they have no money. So my mind was kind of saying, okay, something isn't right, but you know what you saw. The trip to London, he never actually booked it. Anyone that knows me will tell you that she's wanted to go to London since she was a little kid. Oh. So that one, that was difficult because you're, you're playing with me. In the All right. I don't even know if I want to go any further because this story is just like a desperate lady that's looking for someone. Someone popped up at the right time. Cure her of her desperation. And then the person, I guess, left after they get whatever they were supposed to get. This is a story of what a lot of women are going through or been through or experienced. What's different about this story than the others? I guess because she shared like eight hours worth and people was just like listening and interested. You know, but females, they're, they're interested in these type of things, you know, the love and hip hop and all of these drama stories, you know. I'm going to continue. In the series, Teresa explains why she continuously chose to overlook what she calls the United Nations of red flags. There's something that you said I really want to, mm -hmm. I want to get it here, a quote here. Number one, I, didn't I don't want to be alone. Be alone. Number, Number two, two, I didn't want to look stupid. Like, we told you something was up. Um, and number three, I was ready to get married. I felt like time was running out. I ignored things because I really wanted it to be my turn. You get pregnant and unfortunately you lose the baby. That is where I say the relationship should have ended. Instead, the miscarriage almost pushed me to hold on to him even more. Teresa claims after they got married, she started yeah just like what i said i could i could tell i could have told already it's like you're on two different web um dating website that's screaming desperation already you click match with the person on two different website um desperation you move the person in your house after two weeks desperation Oh, because we're just going to lock down temporarily for two weeks after knowing someone for two weeks, you're going to lock down with them? Desperation. Let's hear more of this desperate story. Started uncovering an elaborate web of lies. I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I knew I was in trouble. The question isn't what all did he lie about? The question definitely became, okay, what is actually true? What mm. can you prove? Every I love you was a lie. Every I got you was a lie. That does something to you mentally. What was the most painful part? The part that still makes me, that I struggle with is you pretended to be your own executive assistant when I was texting you to say I'm in pre-op. So, there was never an executive assistant. You were never in a meeting. You just simply did not take me to the hospital when I lost our child. Teresa says she discovered he had a criminal record, documents revealing Legion pled guilty to charges of impersonating a police officer in 2017 and even had an open warrant for violating probation. After just six months of marriage, Teresa and Legion divorced. It was as if a huge, a year worth of weight came off of me. I broke down and I mean, I wailed. I heard you say that you're not who you were before mm. all this mm. happened. Do you miss her? I do, I do. All right, that's where we're gonna stop. Is either one, she's a good liar, or two, the story is very much true and she's just speaking her truth. But I know one thing for sure. She is a desperate woman. Very, very desperate. And then to meet someone within two weeks and believe all of these things about them, you deserve, you deserve what, what you got, you know? It's kind of what you deserve. I'm talking about you seeing all those red flags and ignoring them. You get what you deserve. Let me know what you guys think.